Hey, Amy from the blog at BostonLive.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make a super simple and delicious mashed butternut squash. So I came up with this recipe because I love squash, my family does not. I try to make it all the time, and they all hate it. So how do you make your kids like something or try something or want to eat something that they don't really like? So one way to do that is just change up how you make it. So one day I made this and I kind of roasted the butternut squash and my four-year-old was like, no, this is terrible. So the next day I actually smashed it all up, added a couple things to it and made it extra delicious, almost tasting like a dessert. And the kids loved it. That was my dog. <laughs> my kids absolutely loved it and devoured it and it really does taste like a dessert but on the healthier side. So let's get started and how to make this. So what you really need is a large butternut squash and we're gonna dice it up and we're gonna roast it on a 400 degree oven. And then once it's cooked, we're gonna mash it together with some butter and some cinnamon, a little bit of sweetener, and you can kind of choose and play around with this recipe a little bit too if you want to. And then we're gonna add some cinnamon or you could do some pumpkin spice too if you wanna do that. And then we are going to add a little bit of cream, which is totally optional, but it does give it a really nice consistency. Uh, but I've done it without it too, and it tastes delicious also. And that's it, it's really simple. I always like lining my baking sheets with parchment paper because this just helps with easier cleanup, and I will take anything for easier cleanup. Right, so I always like rinsing off my butter and squash first, just in case there's any dirt or anything on it. And then I'm gonna peel it. So I will say the best place that I have found to buy butternut squashes are Trader Joe's. It seems to be the cheapest you can find. Usually you can find it by pounds, but Trader Joe's it's like, I don't know, two bucks for an organic butternut squash and you can buy the biggest one you can possibly find, which is usually what I do. I always try to buy the biggest one. Then it stretches far. All right. So I'm gonna peel it with a vegetable peeler. Now technically with butternut squash, you can eat the peel, but we don't want the peel in this recipe because we're going to be mashing it up and that would be tough and gross. So I'm just going to peel it off the vegetable peeler and then we're going to dice it up. Oh, and then if you have chickens like we do, all these wonderful squash scraps are going to them. They absolutely love them. It's like candy. We're going to slice this up, and if you've never sliced butternut squash, that was kind of I just like to slice the top off and the bottom off. I like to just slice it in half, and then we're going to slice it this way. It doesn't have to be super pretty. Okay, so we're just going to just slice this up like this into chunks, and I'm going to put it on my roasting dish. I like to do it in chunks just because it makes the mashing a little bit easier. You could just roast it half, half, you know, if you cut it totally in half, you could just roast it that way. I just like doing this because it's easier to mash when it's already in cubes. You want to try to make all of those squash pieces about the same size, that way they just cook evenly. Okay, so let's now go into de-seeding a squash. I know sometimes squashes can be pretty intimidating because they have seeds and people are like, what the heck do you do? So, all you do is you cut it in half, take a large spoon, and you're just going to scoop it out. And I usually try to get a little bit of the flesh, just to make it a little easier with scooping. And that's it. And I'm going to save that for the chickens too. You could even like rinse all the like stringy part out and just take the seeds and you could roast them just like pumpkin seeds. And now let's just finish chopping it up. Alright. I'm going to do about one to two tablespoons of oil. I would say one to two just because it depends on how large your butternut squash is. So this is a fairly large one, so I might end up doing all two. I'm just going to drizzle this on here. I'm going to sprinkle over about a half a teaspoon of salt. And depending on the size of this, you may do more or less salt. Okay, I'm just going to toss this to so get the oil coated. 
I'm gonna bake this at a 400 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now I like to get started to get a little bit brown on top just because it adds a little bit more depth of flavor. So what you can do too is after it's been baking for about, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, um, test it with a fork, see if it's fork tender. And if it is, then put it on the broil for just a few minutes and then um, let it get a little bit, a little toasty. Totally optional, but I think it adds some flavor. All right, so I'm gonna get this in the oven. So yeah, now while that's baking in the oven, I'm going to get my scraps in my bowl and do a little bit of cleanup. These are our, our chicken scrap bowl. I love having chickens because it helps with food waste. They're really fun and hilarious to watch. And it makes me feel like I'm living on a mini farm. All right, so this is totally baked. It's all pork tender. And it's starting to get a little bit brown on the top. So now I'm gonna transfer the butternut squash into a pan and then I'm gonna add the remaining ingredients. It's so simple, we're just gonna mash it. Now you could put this into a bowl. We always seem to be running low on bowls. I don't know why, we just never have enough. So I'm just gonna use a pot. I do sometimes like to put it back on the heat just to melt the butter. So to my steaming hot butternut squash, I'm gonna add about a third a cup of butter. And I just like to slice it up in chunks so it melts a little bit easier. Mix this up. To this, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of sweetener of choice. You can use a honey, maple syrup, you can use sugar, you can use coconut sugar, whatever you have on hand, whatever you wanna use, and test the sweetness. If it wanted a little sweeter, add a little bit more. If you want it less sweet, add a little less. But I have found that about three tablespoons is perfect amount of sweetness. Now we're gonna add two teaspoons of cinnamon, or you could do pumpkin spice. Maybe, I always tell myself that I'm going to put my spices in like cookie jars one day and not get it from the bag that I always use, but you know, that just never seems to happen. I still use the bag. I like to get my spices in the bulk section. They're so much cheaper. All right, about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. This is when you're gonna get your potato masher out and you're gonna mash it together. If the butter is having a difficult time melting, you can just put it right back on the stove about medium heat and then mash it together. Um, while you're mashing it, just heat it up a little bit and that will help uh, melt that butter. Now you can mash this as finely as you like. Um, Maybe leave it as chunky as you like. I like to do it pretty finely. I the kids don't really know. There's squash in here. Although I do tell my daughter that there's squash. My son though, when we tried to give this to him the other day, he didn't even want to try it. And all he looked at it just goes, ucky, ucky. He kept telling me how ucky it was. And I was like, you wouldn't even know, sir. You haven't even tried it to know if it's ucky or not. It's a totally optional step, but you can add two tablespoons of heavy cream. And this just gives it such a nice, smooth, delicious creaminess. It's not too much, but it is a totally optional step. I just love the way that it tastes. I mean, it's anything, is it anything better than heavy cream? I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we're done. Wasn't that simple? You can serve this up however you'd like. You could even serve this as a dessert. Mm, so good. I like to serve this as a side. This would be great for your holiday side. Um, you can also serve, like last night we had it with dinner, and I put this as its own standalone side. We also ate some like chicken and rice with herbs and veggies. And so this just kind of accompanies a, a lot of different things. It doesn't need to be just holidays, even though it is kind of getting to that season. It's just the perfect fall food. Well, thanks so much for stopping by A Blossoming Life. I like to share one new recipe, DIY project, or natural product every week. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And go get yourself a butternut squash and make this delicious butternut squash mash that even your picky kids will like. Well, at least mine are.